Holy cow, everybody, we did it. We made it through an episode, and we're going to do a whole bunch more. It's D-Mike, here for some more fun. Another cool cash sesh of Link's Awakening. HD Remix. Actually, I don't know if that's probably not what it's called, but it is what it is to me. All right, so last time, we were instructed by uh, the Owl to go to the cave that's the south of, of the village after getting the key in the mysterious forest. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Do some spelunking today. And kind of see what horrors await us. So let's get started. Hopefully you've all been doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited to continue to produce content for everybody. Hopefully the first episode goes well and we can shoot for the stars. So anyway, this is the first dungeon of the game, the Tail Cave. There are eight of these dungeons where uh, this one's kind of your tutorial dungeon. This one is more on the kind of get your, get your feet wet side of things. So there's, I'm gonna try to explore all of every dungeon. You don't have to. Not every room needs to be explored. Not every chest needs to be open. There are plenty of things that, just, that aren't required to do for progress, but for the sake of the let's play and to kind of show stuff off, I'd like to try to do that. Because I'm here for you guys. I mean, that's what this is all about. Doing it for the fans. Okay, so we got a small key. Gonna need a few of those to progress throughout the rest of the dungeon. There have been some quality of life upgrades in this game that's been really good. There were moments in the original, I'm speaking of the Game Boy and the DX versions, where if there was a, a key in a room that you could potentially acquire, it would give you a little tone. I believe that happened when you would acquire the, uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. When you would acquire the compass. That would get really frustrating after a while to have to hear that, you know, that ding dong every time. There's only so many ding dongs you can take in life, and there were uh, certainly quite a few in the original. Back in the black and white ding dong era. So we get a map. This first dungeon's pretty simple, but I'll go ahead and show it to you. I'm not really sure what that is supposed to be in terms of like. An image? It kind of looks like a scorpion, I guess, or maybe it's a little phallic, I don't know, but it kind of gives you a an outline of the rooms, which is kind of cool. Back in the original, it was just kind of a blacked out, blacked out square, so that's kind of cool. I guess I should probably go back and get that first room. The way that they've handled the kind of changes from this game to the other game, or changes in this game from the other game, sorry, is really nice. And I know that a lot of people want to complain nowadays that the player is being, having uh no, oh, there's that tone I talked about, it's the compass, yeah. So I know a lot of people want to complain about how games nowadays are coddling players and they're holding their hands a little bit. But this is kind of one of those things where, like, they've kind of smoothed out some of the edges, which is really nice. And made it more uh, user-friendly and playable. So hopefully younger generations of Zelda fans have had a chance to tap into this one. This is a really good Zelda to play if you've never played one before. To get your feet wet. And kind of not overwhelm you getting your experience with the franchise. So we got the compass. The compass combo with the map. Uh, it's pretty useful if you're unfamiliar with it the tone thing is when it'll you know boop, 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 or whatever it does that's there but it just used to be really really repetitive and grating there's other things in this game that they've since done away with that i really do appreciate but that's not something that we'll worry about until uh the second dungeon actually so this enemy is new this is a moldorm a baby Moldorm. So we were in, and there's that toad. We were instructed to come into this dungeon 
with the express uh, intent to uh, to murder infant wildlife. So I'm starting to wonder kind of what the MO is of of the people in charge here. Because I'm sure Link didn't sign up for that. I mean, if you've played the other Zelda games, you'll know that he's got plenty of animal buddies, so causing uh, havoc and murder on the wildlife does not seem to be part of uh, Link's mantra. So we got 20 rupees out of that chest. We're actually going to want to acquire quite a bit of them for a couple of purchasable items in the future, which we'll worry about um, when that comes to pass. But over here, you'll see that there is a kind of cracked wall. That's not something that we can deal with right now. We'll actually have to come back to look at what that is later. That This is one is uh, pretty easily missable. I don't know if there are too many other examples of this, but this is one of where you could come back into an older dungeon with a newer item and use that to pick up a collectible. Speaking of, another small key. What's nice is that the top of the screen in the upper left, you'll see that we have three of them. So the game does keep track in case for those of us who uh, are a little bit on the immune side of counting. Can't blame you. Uh, counting sucks. There's a key block up there, but we can't do anything with that yet. What we actually have to do is... Because we don't have the ability to jump yet. That's one of the big things. That's one of the core struggles for, for Link throughout the Zelda series is can or can't he jump? Where are Link's ups? So, what we actually have to do in the process of dodging all of these... Um, I don't quite remember what these are called. I'm probably the most like inept at names when it comes to video game lore. Please, in the comments, feel free to fill me in, because I don't remember. Um, there's also another item that we can get here that will plug into this. Owl statues, when you get the an owl's beak as the item, you can uh, plug into that statue. It'll give you a bit of a hint. So these guys, when uh, hit with, well, they will actually attack us, so that's pretty rude. Uh, well, they will rudely go after us. Pop out your shield, and they will aggro onto you. And in the process, you can flip them over, give them a couple whacks, and then uh, they'll take it, take them, take them down. So, our third or fourth example of a, of a, I almost said Disney character, of another Nintendo franchise being uh, abruptly inserted into this one, Goombas. Speaking of phallic things, all right, so. This is a little foreboding. I don't know what this could possibly mean, but we can't get it. So we'll have to figure out a way to do that. Dodge the spinners. All right, so now we have the rocks feather. Go ahead and pop into your menu. Nope, not that one. This one. And this kind of becomes the uh, the will stay on this button for a long time item. I usually have the Rock's Feather equipped in most situations because it's just too fun to do a little, little hip hop. Who doesn't like that? Come on. And they made the jumping animation a lot cuter in this game, so kudos to Nintendo for that. Because why else would you play except to watch a cute claymation Link go hippity hop all around? Okay, so now we can jump. Now we have a little bit of uh, more range of motion. The one downside to jumping in this game is that because of the way that the the moving mechanics are held... What am I doing? Hit the wrong buttons here, folks. Because of the way that the moving mechanics are held, it's not a fluid eight directions uh, where you can just... Oh, goodness, what am I doing? Oh, that's going to be really fun to hear. So I apologize for that. I'm going to try to get find a heart as soon as I can. Oh, thanks, game. It's just letting me know how much of a failure I am at this Let's Play. Okay. So... I'm gonna be careful. Hopefully not to have our first death in the first dungeon. That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Okay. So... Anyway, anywho. As I would say, uh, one of the things that's kind of annoying is that, uh... 
the moving mechanics are they're kind of locked into the into the cardinal directions and then you have like the, the eight here too it's tough because it doesn't quite give you the freedom of motion and range to be able to move around the way that you'd like to it kind of feels a little chunky and sometimes it can cause you to miss time your jumps so that's just something to keep in mind also i'm clearly uh a little rusty having not uh tapped into this it's been like a day okay so give me a break folks so can't all be zelda savants as much as we want to be okay this actually is pretty useful so I'm finally going to go ahead and discuss what this is. I've avoided it on purpose the past couple times that I've seen them. There's also been another item that I've since ignored. But you get a piece of power. It makes you walk a little faster. I believe it increases your uh, strength by one and a half times. So that's pretty nice. You get those after you kill a certain amount of enemies in the game. I don't know the exact amount. Feel free to fill me in in the comments if you'd like. Nope. Oh, jeez. Well, he bailed us out. Thanks, piece of power. So, as our reward for beating that mini-boss, when, uh, when you beat off a mini-boss, your reward is you get a fairy. And a... I don't want to say, like, mid-dungeon warp, but, I mean, it's pretty close. So, all right, so let's check. You'll see that there are... Oh, well, you know, I said I was going to explore everything, so... I'm going to stay true to my word. You can go north here as well and take more damage. So here's another... <laughs> these guys. Here's another item, or enemy, that you'll notice uh, kind of based off of, I guess, a deck of cards. That situation isn't too bad, but there are instances later in the game in like a future dungeon where the item that you need to progress is what you get from them, and it's just irritating having to try to deal with that. Alright, so if you get that item earlier, you can plug it into those owl statues and it'll give you a little hint if you need it. Pretty useful for, uh, for a new player. Just a little hint. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and take on our first boss. I wonder who it could be. Oh, it's the Burger King. Moldorm. So. One of the things you'll notice is that, uh... Oh! One of the things to be careful with in this uh, early boss is there are those four corners of the room that are um, exposed, and you don't want to you don't want to fall into that. If you do, it'll just send you down to that uh, lower part of the dungeon. You can come back into it, and this is not a low heart run. Uh, we're going full throat, all the hearts we can get, baby. Cool, so we did it, guys. First dungeon is complete. How about that? And little did you know, in his free time, Link is an excellent cellist. Drain that swamp, baby. All right, so. This is actually a hint for uh, the second dungeon. But that's a little ways off. We're not going to worry about that right now. Game, stop antagonizing me. So, um, we'll actually come back to the first dungeon in a little while because there is, like, we saw that bombable wall. I can't do anything with that yet. So we'll sort that out later. It's not required, but you do get a collectible in it that does benefit you throughout the course of this game. Ooh, ooh. 
All right, so that's rude. For somebody who might be struggling with like self-awareness issues, Owl, maybe take five to 10% off that one. Okay, so the Owl clearly is not even just the top of the food chain here. He's getting, he's just middle management bossing us around. So he reiterates that we need to go to the swamp. Which is very desirable. So we go to a very dangerous forest. We're told to go to a monster infested beach. And then spend time in a swamp. I don't know who planned the itinerary of this trip, but it sucks. So we do have a little bit... Oh, excuse you. So we do have a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a chore to do before we head back up. If you remember, Chow Chow, the little baby Bow Wow, was so kind to give us her ration of dog food. So it appears as though this alligator, who has a plethora of bananas, maybe a member of the Yiga clan, if you get that one, might be interested. Alright, so the people on this island clearly have uh, problems with addiction. Now, in fairness, uh, I can't say I've ever had that type of reaction when given uh, the opportunity to have some dog food, but as somebody who is a big fan of chicken tendies, you put those in front of me, and I might lose my mind a little bit, too. Alright, so, um, at least now we have actual food. That's a bit of a, of a bit of an upgrade. Okay, so that's another progression in the trade quest. But unlike um, the last item, getting that set of bananas is actually required to progress. You can kind of stall the trade quest for a little bit, but in general, you're going to be hard pressed to to move forward with the game. Oh, okay. So these these children are having a rough go. Moblins in the village. Well, it looks like there is some danger. What is happening? All right, well, we will not stand for that. I wonder where they could have gone, though. Hmm. Well, if I had any sort of a hunch, the last time that we encountered moblins was in this spoopy forest. So maybe that's where we'll start our search. Be on the lookout for an Amber Alert to all your phones from Madam Meow Meow. Okay. Wandering around this forest, once again, I just wanted to point out that I think the fog effect is kind of a nice little aesthetic. Um, that's what this game does really well, is there's just little touches that they added to it that, beyond the quality of life stuff, like I'm just talking about aesthetics here, that I think are really nice improvements. Okay, so that we saw the piece of power in the tail cave. This is its defensive counterpart, the guardian acorn. So I don't know if it changes your uh, default speed, but I do know that it improves your defense, as it said. I don't want to talk over you, fans. I know that you can read, but anyway. Let's grab this piece of heart real quick. We've got three. One more. 
and we'll have our, ourselves another heart container. So I also just wanted to point this out as well, for those of you who may be wondering. There are some pretty noticeable frame rate drops in this game, and I assure you that's not coming from my end. When this game came out, I don't know how or what they did in terms of kind of the back-end programming side of it, but it's had some pretty notorious struggles with frame rates dropping from 60 to 30 uh, a lot. So just to forewarn you, uh, your eyes are not deceiving you. That's actually the game dropping the frames, not your machine or mine. Uh, it's a little frustrating, but, you know, I think we'll live. So our guardian acorn has expired. Let's take a, let's take a peek into here. This looks kind of suspicious. Speaking of susp- oh boy, okay. Now you done did it. So you can handle this handle this guy the same as the other moblins in the forest with the hack and slash variety. Take that back. These guys will come at you with their, uh, with their spears. Easily dispatched. But there may be something up ahead that's a little more difficult. Okay. So this is the... I don't know what his exact name is, but... Oh, I screwed that up. Anyway, um... So you can't hit him. Until he's done that, he's done his run and oh I'm just today is not my day. Until he injures himself by running into the wall. He's pretty easy to dodge though. Move out of the way of his spear. Let him do his animation. Run into the wall, rinse and repeat. Not too bad. So I'm gonna I'm assuming this is maybe the Moblin King, that's his name, I don't know. I know there are actually Moblin Kings in the other games, but... Four spin slashes will do it. You could probably dispatch them a lot better and or faster than I did, but... Slow and steady wins the race. And... We can rescue Bow Wow! Or not, okay. <laughs> you have to interact with them. In the other version, all you had to do was a quick sword slash, and you'd pop Bow Wow off of uh, off the chain with the rock. So Bow Wow is a required component to progress. You actually can't get any further without him. There are certain parts of uh, obstructions in, in between now and the second dungeon that will prevent you from being able to get there without Bow Wow. So you can't skip this. Pretty convenient to be told that by the owl because the swamp is literally right next to us. In there. Pretty tricky. So now we have Bow Wow. You can actually take Bow Wow wherever you want and he will uh, attack enemies and take them out for you. It's pretty, pretty convenient. The one downside to this part is how kind of compressed of an area this is between the first and the second dungeon. There isn't really a ton that you can do. Having the the second dungeon item is pretty integral for completion. Another one of those situations where you can't do much without it. So I'm just gonna do a little exploring in the meantime. Kind of see what's up and around here. The one thing, like I mentioned before, that you're going to definitely want to do... You're going to need quite a bit of money in order to progress. So it doesn't hurt to kind of roam around a little bit and see what you can pick up. There's obviously stuff that we're not going to be able to get now. We've got skulls and rocks and... And there are various paraphernalias in the way. And one thing too for that was in the other game that they kept. 
uh, kind of a little hint station as well, maybe like a fortune teller, or are these hedges that have telephones on them? So if you get stuck and you need a hint on where you're supposed to go, that's a quick way to do it. That weird uh, stack of pancakes that we just killed, that's a like-like. They're pretty nasty. Um, they will go out of their way to steal your shield, which is... I mean, just the, the level of disrespect that we're experiencing here as a... as a guest. Clearly, the, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is, uh, is a lesson in the lack of manners that some people can have. I know those who watch this video are far more diligent and respectful at their upkeep of their manners. One of the downsides of collecting the pieces of power in the Guardian Acorn is that they take away from the music of the game, which I think is fantastic, so I don't seem to care for that as much. Now, one of the ways that you can get money, and then I used to do this when I would play the original game, is you can just chop down all these plants, I guess. And I would just do this for hours. There are much better ways to get money in the game, but this is the way that I used to do it. Now, one of the reasons why coming here is important is because of that thing that I just picked up. This is the... One of the... I guess kind of the major collectibles in the game. It's not required that you pick that up, but that is a secret seashell. And we're gonna be trying to collect 20 of them. There are more. I believe they actually increased the amount in this game. Uh, somewhere in, like they almost doubled it, I think. So it's a pretty exceptional amount. And getting at least 20 will net us a pretty nice reward. So we'll come back to that eventually. Let's just pop into the shop real quick. So you can see what all of this money acquisition is for. There are some pretty expensive things that we'll be after in the future. The most expensive thing that we can get right now is a shovel, but we can't quite afford that right now. We'll also want to grab this piece of heart later on. I don't believe that the shop in the original game sold a piece of heart, so that's an upgrade. There are more pieces of heart in this game. I'm assuming that's to make it a little bit easier, but there's these two blank spots which will be filled in after that first, uh, after the second dungeon is completed. So I'm going to want to pop in one last time to the, the little trendy game down here. I do want to try to redeem myself and see if I can pick up that rupee. And actually there's quite a few things. Well, I, we'll probably just end the episode this way. we have got 10 tries, or 11 tries. If I can manage that red rupee, then I'll pick up another mo another couple. All right, so same thing. X moves you forward, very finicky. A moves you to the right. You want to get a, that spotlight right underneath when it comes to the rupee especially. That looks pretty good. As you saw in the first episode, that crane kind of swings pretty wildly when it's moving it. The best case scenario that you can have is that the rupee is the closest to the conveyor belt. And when that happens, it makes it a lot easier. So you can come back and play this at any point during the game, but I think it's kind of fun to pop in in between dungeons and see what's available. Kind of pick up the fun little items. So we got the first secret seashell. This is a quick way to get the second. The majority of the collectibles that you'll find... Oh, cool game, thanks. Um, the majority of the collectibles that you'll find in this game are required, but I mean, unless you hate fun, I don't see why you wouldn't give them a go. Oh, I overshot that one. This doesn't look good. Not looking good, folks. But there might be a chance. That looks like a come from behind victory. I'm going to try one last time to see if I can get that. Um, that secret seashell. I feel kind of shafted 
Bye. Nope. That's... <laughs> that's not gonna do it. We're doing our... Oh! At the very least, we picked it up. Can it stay in... <laughs> okay. I'm sure all of you have been to an amusement park or maybe a grocery store before where there's been those, uh... Those crane games that they have at the entrance to try to steal some money away from you. I'm not sure kind of what the payout is for those games, but they do feel kind of rigged. Oh, come on, that's garbage. I don't know if I can get that, to be honest. I'm gonna try one last time. I'm actually, I shouldn't be doing this because I need as much money as I can get, but it is a compulsion that when you get the chance to throw a couple of dollars in those crane games, it's hard to avoid it. Okay. So that was unnecessary. And a little unfair. Okay, so we're done. That's pretty much all that we're gonna- Oh, I just- Oh, I paid again to play and I did not mean to. So I just wasted 10 rupees. Good, good job me. I guess I could've tried to pick up the, the powder. It's okay. I'm throwing away money like I'm buying GameStop stock. Okay. No. No more. No more playing. Let's collect our... Our plunder here. Let's pick up all the booty. So we got 20 of our rupees back. We got another secret seashell and... A Chow Chow figure. So if you remember, there were those little pedestals that were inside the various homes. Now these items, collectibles, belong in those spots. So when you collect them, there's there's a quite a few actually that they've added into the game, which is really neat little figurines. Um, and it's fitting now that it's a Chow Chow, now that we've rescued Bow Wow. So you can collect all those and drop them off in their respective areas. It's just for flavor. That has nothing to do with the actual outcome of the game. It's not required in any way, but it's really fun and kind of cool little throwbacks to the various Nintendo franchises. So I think that's a pretty good amount of progress for today. You got a dungeon out of the way. We're going to go ahead and tackle the second one in the next episode. And uh, we'll make some more progress and see if we can't uh, make some use of Bow Wow before we take him back to the old homestead. It's been a lot of fun, guys. Thanks for watching. I've been D-Mike. Keep it real, everybody. See ya!